This safe and tranquil sanctuary is called Living Hope Maternity Home. Here in Ethiopia, where poverty is especially cruel and severe, this place can mean the difference between life or death for young girls facing an unexpected pregnancy. Thanks for joining me for part two of this very special program in Africa. In part one, we met Dinah Monahan, the founder of Living Hope Maternity Home. Dinah and her husband Mike founded Living Hope four years ago after a mission trip to Ethiopia opened their eyes to the prevalence of abortion in the country. Since then, the maternity home has grown. They've graduated one group of young mothers and are housing their second. Currently, Diana and her team are developing programs to assist these young mothers once they leave the maternity home. Since you opened your doors, what happened then? Well, we were in another house. We were in a smaller house, and we were full. I mean, eight girls and, we, and babies, and it was uh, crowded and full. And, but we saw the girls just make incredible progress and because I, I visit often enough I just I fell in love with these girls their stories break your heart not just of what happened to them they're pregnant but a lifetime they've never known many of them anybody to be kind to them so coming here at first a lot of them are very suspicious this is not a common thing in Ethiopia this is this kind of ministry but once they settle in and realize that we're here to help them and you know they make money and they eat well and and they are loved this staff loves these girls and advocates for these girls and so once they realize that um, they just blossom they every each year that I'd come back I could I could see them and, and they just blossom and then they leave and and then the, and the next group is here now. So we're on group number two, and um, now we've moved, and we are full to the brim. And you have 12 girls? 12 young women, yeah. And how many babies? Seven babies right now, yeah. With a couple on the way? Yes. In what ways do you prepare them for their future? Well, we, are, uh, we have a case manager and who, like I said, determines where they are and what they, what their abilities are and what their challenges are. And then our goal, that our goal is that each young woman when she leaves here can get a place and you know, it may not be by our standards very good, but it's shelter, it's a roof and it's security and that she can um, get training in something that allows her to have a sustainable income. And whether it's being a chef, uh, a cook or, doing hair, or depending on her abilities, secretarial, whatever, wherever she is, there's something that she can do. And it doesn't take a lot by our standards um, to survive here, um, $60 a month, $70 a month, and they can make ends meet. If they qualify, we have a sponsorship program where individuals can sponsor their baby for $30 a month and $30 a month ensures that that baby is uh, gonna eat and going to be able to have clothes and have food and have medical care when they need it. So these are all the things that we offer our, our girls and then our graduates. Dinah came up with the idea for the girls to make beautiful paper bead necklaces and bracelets while living at the home. Dinah then sells the jewelry in the States and the money goes directly into the girls' savings accounts. Once they graduate, they use the money for education or babysitting while they work. Meseret Sayum, the executive director of Living Hope Maternity Home, is a great proponent of the girls continuing their education. She tries to provide opportunities for the girls to go to school even while they're still at Living Hope. After they choose to support their baby, to stay on their hand, we try to find options. When they, when they are here, they, they have different job skills and training. Within that training, they, they will have money. They will choose either a small business to continue their life or to hire somewhere. So we'll find options. It depends on their situation. Do you provide any kind of training or education for them? Yes, uh, we give them different uh, skill training. 
sewing, bead making, flower making, mm -hmm. and sometimes food preparation also. It is a basic thing. And some are in school while they live here, right? Yes. So you take them to the school yeah. to provide for, yes. for them to get their education? Yes. If they are students, we provide taxi for them, taxi pay, mm -hmm. then they, will con they continue their education and they finish. Um, there was one girl here. She was in grade 10. Immediately we asked her if she willing to continue her education. She was okay. We pay taxi every day for her. She continued it. She learned until she finished. So we facilitate to, to continue their education. In a moment, we'll meet three recent Living Hope graduates who are trying to make a life for themselves and their babies. Tazita Shamelis was working as a prostitute and became pregnant. She tried to abort her baby multiple times via traditional means, but was unsuccessful. Then she learned of Living Hope Maternity Home, and her attitude toward her unborn child completely changed. Tazita recently moved on from Living Hope. By working and with the help of her American sponsor, she's providing for her adorable son, David, who was a favorite with the crew. I tried to abort many times, but I can't. All medicines are not working. I heard from one of the prostitutes about the living hope. What did they tell you? Did they give you other options different from abortion? I have told that the ministry, the living hope, can help me and I can deliver here and the ministry can provide me whatever I need. At that time, the ministry was full. They are, but they allow for me, by considering my problem, to live in maternity home. Well, now you have a beautiful son. And I suppose you didn't expect such beauty and love to come out of an unexpected pregnancy like that, did you? I never expect to have this life. When I came here, I came only with my suitcase. But when I departed from here, I have my own baby and also I have God. So it makes me very excited. What is your future like? What are you doing now? Sadat. Now I am a cleaner. I am doing in clinic. Does the ministry provide for your needs from month to month? Yes, the ministry provided me. I have a sponsor. And because of my sponsor, I can feed my baby. I can feed my son because I can get a sponsorship for my baby because of this ministry. So I want to thank Dinah and my sponsor. I think after this, I can be able to live as good as I want. Helen Habta and Zanabwa Damao graduated with Living Hope Maternity Home's first group. Helen's daughter Ruth and Zanabwa's son Solomon still love seeing the staff of the home. With help from Living Hope, Helen and Zanabwa are working together on a future plan to help them provide for their children. So what are your plans now for the future since you've had your babies? When we live in the maternity home, we are making jewelry and with that jewelry, the ministry sold the jewelry and we can save the money in our account. Now currently we are in that money, the ministry send us to school for training, for hairdressing training. So for the future, we have a plan to open our small business together and our saving account money is going to only for school. Additionally, we have a sponsorship for our baby. With that money, we can feed our baby. So we are safe and we are very, very grateful for getting sponsorship for our sponsors, and we are very happy. We have a bright future. Do you want to practice on my hair? <laughs> Can you make it orange? <laughs> you have two adorable children, 
So I'd like to know from each of you what you like most about being mothers. I love my daughter because she is part of my body. Even when I get angry, I will play with her. It makes me very happy. I love my daughter. My son always makes me happy. I always play with him. I am very happy with carrying my baby. I am grateful. I thank God for having my son. When we return, we'll meet an abortion facility worker who secretly refers young girls considering abortion to the Living Hope staff. Most of the girls who come to Living Hope Maternity Home originally sought an abortion from the local abortion facility. Thanks to some of the facility workers' referrals, Meseret and her staff have been able to counsel these young women about the dangers of abortion. Meseret, sometimes someone from the abortion facility will refer girls to this home, right? Yes. Tell me about this person. Okay. Not one person. There are many persons. Several? Yes several persons, those who are working in the abortion clinic. They know about uh, the unborn. We introduce ourselves. Oh, if this ministry is alive, we can say. Because they are working there because of that is their duty, you know. Once they hire there, they are assigned in that, in that, in that uh, place. That's why they are doing that. But once we introduce ourselves, okay, we can send. We, che we exchange our address, we send the girls. Immediately they call us, please introduce this girl. They gave room for us to talk with the, the girls before they did abortion. I had the opportunity to speak with one of the abortion facility workers who frequently refers girls to Living Hope who are unsure of abortion. He's been working at the facility for two years and has seen the popularity of abortion rise. His tasks include providing chemical and surgical abortions, as well as providing medical care to young women who sought a cultural abortion elsewhere. He wished to remain anonymous for the interview. Is abortion frequently used in Ethiopia? And if so, why? But I'm yet to see Rana. Yeah, we are doing this abortion frequently and many times. Even if we say no, they go to the traditional people. So even yesterday, I have a visit from a region called Afar. So she used the traditional one to abort. What is the traditional one? There are different types of traditional method. The first one, they send air through the glucose tube. They send the glucose tube to the uterus and then they uh, pump the air. So that time the, the, the baby died and start bleeding. The other uh, method is there are uh, many traditional medicine prepared from different types of leaves and these things. So they also send that through the tube to the uterus, so this way they will abort, but most of them come to the hospital because they could not finalize it. Do you see any complications as a result of the abortion procedures? Oh, Those who are doing their abortion in our clinic do not get any complication, but those who start abortion through cultural clinic, they come mostly with anemic, so uh, there is big complication with the cultural uh, abortion. Have you seen the women uh, be negatively affected by the abortion? Oh, but I'm not. There are women who face this abortion two, three times. When they do two or three times when they are students. So now when they start their family and want to have a child, they can't uh, because of these things. So uh, just now, before I came, I was doing one abortion stuff. So this woman, uh, she was, she did 
the abortion two times previously when she was a student. Now she can't, she has, because of the complication, uh, she has to uh, uh, do that abortion. So uh, she was crying when I did that because she can't have a child. Do you refer women to the Living Hope Maternity Home? Uh, yes, I sent many girls here and uh, I was really suffered when I was working in this abortion thing. And finally, when S Sister Mulu communicated me and uh, told me about this organization, I feel happy. And from that time onward, I was sending women here. Could you describe to me what effect this job has had on you personally? I'm a Christian. So as a Christian, it has big, uh, big uh, impact in my life because I'm, I'm killing, I'm killing. When I do the abortion, we are killing a baby. So that is the biggest impact in my life and that disturbs me. But when I think the other way, the women uh, might have a better condition. There are many university students uh, who comes at the end of the last year, they come with this complication, so we will help them so they get good condition now, they are in good condition. But the only impact uh, uh, or problem created in my life is I'm a Christian person, I'm doing that beyond my face. So because they are saving the mother life and also the child life, and, and we don't know what this child is going to be, so I really appreciate this organization. Coming up, Dinah and Meseret talk about the impact of Living Hope on the girls' lives the past four years. Over the past four years, Living Hope Maternity Home has been providing a safe haven and hope for the future for young girls facing unexpected pregnancies. During that time, Dinah and Meseret have seen incredible changes in the lives of the girls, as well as in their own. Dinah, how have you seen the Living Hope Maternity Home change the lives of the girls that live here? Oh my goodness, I think of uh, Tazita and Helen and uh, Etefarau and Minot and all of these precious girls who really for the first time in their life have hope. I think it's so well named. They have hope. To be able to work and live in a way that they're just not always worried and, and hungry, that's success. And that we have been successful with. The same as the future, as the, as the, as the past. They are changed, their life completely changed because um, those who complete from the home, they, they start their own business and they hire in different places. They know who they are. They are committed to, to serve God. They change, their heart changes. They know about abortion, they know about uh, abstinence now, the benefit of abstinence and the side effect of abortion. So their life changed completely. And now they're telling other girls. We want to tell for the American people that God saved our baby's life. We can save our baby's life because of this ministry. We thank God. That's a great thing for us. We are very happy for having our daughter and son. Dinah, how has this home changed your life and that of Mike, your husband? To add something as far away as Ethiopia, and to have this cultural experience and to get to know these girls and have such a wonderful staff has enlarged our lives, has, it's added something that I feel privileged to be you know, one of the few people that, that gets to serve in this way, that gets to um, be involved in a work like this that, that uh, God has, obviously God has brought it about and God has blessed it because it's flourishing and, and it's doing so well. And so Mike and I, it's, it's blessed us both in, in, immeasurably. Meseret, why is it that you feel the work you're doing here is so very important? 
just because of uh, the, the, the ladies and the baby's life. And this is also an opportunity for Christians, those who are pro-life, because we apply our belief in a practical way. This girl was, uh, they diminished their hope, even they, they don't have hope, But now, their, their story was broken, but now it continues in the future. I love coming to the continent of Africa to experience the rich culture and the friendly people. Hopefully we've given you a glimpse into Ethiopian society, both the sorrows and the joys. In spite of the many struggles, Africans possess a deep love and joy that warms the hearts. Thanks for watching. This week I'd like to offer you one of these beautiful handcrafted beaded necklaces made by the Ethiopian girls of Living Hope Maternity Home. They'll serve as a reminder of the lives being changed in this African nation. Visit our website at facinglife.tv to enter for your chance to receive one free. While there, be sure to check out the links to learn more about Living Hope Maternity Home and how you can help. Also, find out how you can order a copy of this two-part episode on DVD to share with others.